Hey, what's up guys? Joker here and I hope you're all doing well. Today we're going to be talking about Cyberpunk 2077 and what type of PC you will actually need to be able to run this game at various different resolutions for a certain target frame rates, whether or not you want to get ray tracing effects and all of that stuff because yesterday CD Projekt Red held a big press event where a lot of the media was able to get hands-on with the game, some of them playing it on their own local hardware while other members of the media were playing it on the GeForce Now game streaming service which was likely using top-end hardware. So because of this event that they held, probably because the game got delayed, um, we got some new information regarding the type of hardware that was needed in order to hit certain resolutions with certain graphics settings, ray tracing effects, and we can kind of take from that um, and, you know, figure out what type of system you might be able to, you might actually need to be able to run this game when it comes out. And we also have some speculative uh, system requirements from the gaming industry, as there have no, not been any official system requirements released at this point in time by CD Projekt Red, so we're going to get into all of that. Did you just finish building a sweet gaming rig only to have this happen to you? Not to worry, because your CD key has you covered with Windows 10 Pro licenses for under $18. And if you head over there right now, you could save 20% off with my code JPD20 at checkout. You receive your key within seconds, and then just click the start button and type activate to find the Windows activation screen, and all you gotta do then is paste your code in. For more info as well as that coupon code, be sure to check out the links down in the description below. So first up, let's talk about these gameplay demos that were shown off yesterday by CD Projekt Red. Um, they did hold a one of their own events on this new uh, series called Night City uh, Wire, I believe it's called, um, where basically they're going to be doing different episodes throughout the year leading up until the release of the game, where we'll probably get you know new information about the game, the story, and all that trickled in over, over time. So they did this like 25 minute long video. It's definitely worth checking out if you're excited for Cyberpunk 2077 coming out this year, which I certainly am. Huge fan of CD Projekt Red and the Witcher series of games, and this game so far is looking absolutely incredible. Um, the graphics, visuals, and stuff like that are, I think, truly uh, quote-unquote next-gen. I think this is the first real next-gen title, which is probably why they chose to delay this game until November, is so that they can have it out right around the time when the next generation of consoles come out. It, I mean, I guess we could basically... Um, say at this point that is more or less a launch title. I mean, it might be within a week or two of when these consoles coming out, but this is going to be one of these early games that really make people want to buy next generation consoles, uh, you know, even though the games are going to work on PS4 and Xbox One, uh, you know, when it comes out, it's also going to work on the PS5 and Xbox Series X day one, even if you buy the PS4 or Xbox One copy, it's going to work on those next gen consoles. And they did mention during the event that there'll be like a upgrade. Uh, they didn't really give any further the details on it, but I assume on the next gen consoles that would bring with it things like ray tracing as the next gen consoles uh, will support ray tracing, but uh, kind of getting off on a tangent there, um, really we're here to talk about the performance today uh, on the PC that was, you know, talked about a little bit uh, during this event. One of the content creators that posted a video uh, was by the name of Skill Up, who was one of the few members of the press that actually was playing on his own local hardware. As I said at the start, a lot of other members of the media were playing on GeForce Now, so it's really anyone's best guess what type of hardware NVIDIA had uh, on their servers, but it was very likely top-end spec, um, something like an RTX 2080 Ti, just like uh, Skill Up was using. Now, um, because of the information provided by Skill Up and the performance that he talked about, uh, for him, the game was running at 1080p, 60 frames per second on that RTX 2080 Ti with ray tracing effects and max settings completely enabled. So, um, you know, we obviously it doesn't seem like there was an uncapped frame rate, but it sounds like, you know, on paper from him that it's, it can run on a 2080 Ti and get 60 frames per second at 1080p with ray tracing effects, which is pretty good because of ray tracing and how advanced it looks in this game. And also we're expecting to see a new lineup of 3000 series cards later this year, which are meant to be even better in handling ray tracing effects. However, it was also mentioned uh, in another feed that this preview build was also running DLSS 2.0. So um, that would mean that the 1080p resolution that the game was apparently running at is also not truly 1080p as DLSS will cut your resolution down and then use tensor cores to basically upscale that to give you a crisper image. And, you know, just watching, you know, a few, few gameplay videos out there, it's fairly obvious that it is 
uh, very likely running at sub 1080p. A lot of the textures, uh, the aliasing and stuff uh, on the character models is extremely blurry, even though it's using DLSS 2.0, that's still going to be the case where the game is essentially running at sub 1080p, which is not that impressive to be perfectly honest. If it was running, you know, just max settings, 1080p, 60 frames per second with ray tracing on, I would say that's a pretty good start with the 2080 Ti for a game that is not fully optimized yet. And, you know, there might be some more headroom there to see where the performance can go. But if it's running DLSS on the game at 1080p, that is not actually 1080p. And that is not very impressive, even for 2080 Ti on a next-gen game with a $1,200 uh, graphics card. So that's kind of scary uh, to think about as it seems like, you know, if you're, especially if you're wanting to do 1440p or 4K, uh, it seems like the next generation 3000 series 3080 Ti or 3090s, uh, which is one of the rumored names for those, is probably going to be crucial, especially if you want to do anything above 1080p and if you don't want to use DLSS, which a lot of people don't want to utilize because they want to play at their native resolution and get the crispest image possible. But without having any firm frame rate numbers and an uncapped frame rate and knowing what the 2080 Ti, um, you know, was was really running the game at, as I said, it could have been over 60 frames per second. It's really hard to figure out, you know, how much headroom was really there for that card to be able to run the game, especially if, you know, you turned off ray tracing effects would likely, you know, boost the frame rate by probably another anywhere from 15 to 30 frames per second, roughly. Obviously, I'm just, you know, taking off the top of the head. But that's, you know, by comparing it to, you know, games we've played in the past, things like Battlefield Five and other titles that have supported ray tracing, that's typically the type of performance you could, set, you can, you could uh, expect to see, uh, improvement-wise, if you go ahead and disable ray tracing. Now, we do have some system requirements that are, um, you know, based on industry sources and what, you know, they assume are, are going to be needed in order to be able to run this game. This was actually posted over on the Steel Series. Uh, website, which is, you know, a very reputable company. They make, uh, you know, PC peripherals and stuff like that, mice, keyboards, mouse pads, things like headphones, things, things along those lines. Uh, so they posted up some initial system requirements, again, which are not official, but it's what a lot of sources agree upon that you will probably need. So for the minimum requirement on the GPU side, they're saying an R9 380 or a GTX 960 2 gigabyte card, which I think is uh, fairly low, but that would very likely be for like 1080p, you know, low to medium settings and probably like 30 frames per second. Definitely not using ray tracing on a system like that. And they say an i5 2500K or an FX8320. But that is, uh, I, I mean, I guess I would agree that that could probably run this game, but that is at the bare minimum. Bare minimum, as I said, again, 1080p medium settings, maybe at best, and probably not 60 FPS. I would say the recommended uh, spec here is probably uh, fairly accurate. They're saying for the GPU, a Vega 64 8 gigabyte card or a GTX 1070, which is fairly comparable to that, although really a GTX 1080 uh, would be closer to a Vega 64 card for the NVIDIA side. And recommended requirements typically are targeting 1080p, high settings, 60 frames per second. So for that, I would say that this seems fairly believable. I think Vega 64 or a GTX 1080 or something like maybe an RTX 2070 or a 2060 Super, which is fairly comparable to a 1070 or 1080. Uh, I would say that that seems about right. And on the CPU, they say a 4670K or a Ryzen 5 1600, which I also agree with. I think th both of those uh, would be pretty solid, although I would probably lean towards more the Ryzen 5 1600 as this is meant to be a next-gen title, and I do think the extra cores and threads are really going to start to matter uh, once the PS5 and Xbox Series X come out, and having an i5 4670K, which is just a quad-core, just a straight quad-core, no hyper-threading, that's before, uh, you know, Intel ramped up their core counts, having something like the Ryzen 5 1600, uh, six cores, 12 threads, even though it's a little bit slower than the newer generation Ryzen stuff, I think the extra cores and threads there is going to help on this game, but that's pure speculation on my part, as as, is, as are all of these system requirements. We're just kind of tr trying to talk about this and get this information out there. And I want to get your guys' feedback as well, you know, what you think about this and if, you know, what you think you'll be able to need uh, to actually run this game when it comes out later this year. Uh, and then also they have a set of uh, system requirements called mid-range with ray tracing support, 
where they say the GPU would be an RTX 2060 Super. Uh, now they say mid-range, I guess that would mean like 1080p, but with ray tracing, I don't see this being accurate. Um, obviously they're not listing an AMD card because none of the AMD cards currently support ray tracing, although Navi 2 is meant to be supporting uh, ray tracing effects, but we haven't seen any of those in the market yet, so it's really hard uh, to speculate on those, especially since we don't even have model numbers or anything about those cards uh, just yet, which is actual information. But to say mid-range with ray tracing support in RTX 2060 Super, I would say that you're really uh, reaching there, especially since during this media event, they needed an RTX 2080 Ti to run it at 1080p, and with DLSS, which, as I stated at the start, is not really 1080p. It's the resolution cut down quite a bit and then upscaled in order to get the image somewhat closer to what native 1080p would actually look like. So, you know, based on that, I think, you know, for when this game comes out, I think for ray tracing effects, you are really going to need something RTX 2080 and above or whatever ends up being that counterpart for the AMD side on Navi 2 once those GPUs come out, if they have something that can compete at the level of the RTX 2080, 2080 Super, 2080 Ti. And then of course, we'll have the 3000 series to talk about very likely uh, around August and September. So that's going to bring in some new cards that we can talk about. But on the GPU side, I really think it's going to require something quite hefty. Uh, even, even if you don't want to use ray tracing effects, I think 1080p, you know, high to ultra settings, I think you're looking at somewhere um, around the bare minimum of like a 1080 Ti RTX 2070. I think that is going to be the bare minimum. I think even if you, if you were trying to play at 1440p on ultra settings without ray tracing, I think th that those cards are going to struggle quite a bit uh, unless you get into the 3000 series, which again, this is based on rumor. They're meant to be significantly more efficient when it comes to dealing with ray tracing as much as four times better than the touring cards that are out there right now. But that's based on rumors and stuff. Um, but, you know, it would make sense that those cards would be able to handle the ray tracing stuff a lot better. Even if, you know, typical rasterization performance on these new cards are only like, you know, 25 to 30% faster than the touring cards. From what we've heard so far, the ray tracing uh, performance is something that is meant to be amped up exponentially, you know, something that we don't typically see with rasterization performance generation to generation. So with something like Cyberpunk that's going to have so much ray tracing on so many surfaces and stuff like that, uh, I do think the 3000 series for anyone that wants to use ray tracing is really going to be a requirement unless you're planning to pay it 1080p with DLSS on and use a $1,200 graphics card. It sounds like for ray tracing stuff, the 3000 series is really going to be made specifically for a title like this. So we'll have to wait and see once those cards come out, but I think that's probably going to be people's best bet if they want to use ray tracing, but I know that's not the majority of people. I know most people just want to run this game at 1080p or 1440p at high to ultra settings and get a good frame rate. And I think on current generation hardware, that is going to be manageable, but I do think you're going to need a fairly high-end GPU, especially if you want to get into 1440p high ultra. As I said, I think you're going to need something like uh, like a 20, 2070, 2080 probably is going to be realistic, but we'll just have to wait and see on all of that. I'm looking forward to this game a lot. So I just wanted to talk about it here today. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Um, you know, if whether or not you agree or disagree with my, you know, spec my, my speculation here on what type of hardware you're actually going to be able to need to run this game. Um, I know I'll definitely be grabbing a 3080 Ti because I want to play this game at 4K maxed out, hopefully with ray tracing and not DLSS. So all, either, although I think that's even probably not going to happen. I I, even with a 3080 Ti, I have my doubts that that will be able to run this game at 4K maxed out and ray tracing stuff turned on. I think even with ray tracing off, 60 frames per second will be a struggle on uh, next generation hardware just based on how good this game looks. It's one of the most detailed and gorgeous looking games I've ever seen. Um, don't really know how the engine optimization is going to be. It's, you know, this is all new territory. So I look forward to trying this game. Unfortunately, didn't get invited to the media event this week as I would have loved to get hands on with the game, but unfortunately those are the breaks and uh, just have to wait for when the game comes out in November later this year, just like the rest of you guys. But I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. If you enjoyed this video, leave, leave a thumbs up on it, uh, subscribe if you're not already, and I will catch you all tomorrow for another video. Ta-ra.